I've got something you'll be interested in. Those performance upgrades we discussed after the last race. They're on the car and the data looks promising. Take a look at the details. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Samba Career Mode part number 11 for round 11 at the Hungara Ring in Budapest, Hungary. As you can see, as you can see and as you heard from Chris, our new upgrade has now been fitted on the car that failed at the last event and we were able to we repurchased it at in the previous event at uh, Silverstone. So now it's on back on the car and officially on the car and as you can see based off the performance up, performance chart we are right there again, once again, with McLaren, which is uh, absolutely crucial. But uh, we'll have to wait and see if they end up bringing an upgrade in the next couple of races. They might increase that gap again. But as long as both of us are closing that gap to that uh, midfield pack, then I'm happy with that. So without further ado, let's get into practice. We arrive at the Hungaro Ring in Hungary for today's practice session. This 4.3 kilometer track features a number of tight corners, which has been the scene of many memorable races. Let's hope we have another this weekend. A warm welcome once again to the man standing beside me in the commentary box for this session, Anthony Davidson. Hello, Ant. Excited to get underway? Yeah, absolutely. I always look forward to seeing the cars get out there on track. And they probably won't be on the limit immediately, of course. Uh, we know that one or two of the teams are looking to do some work on new aerodynamic packages, so that always takes some time to get into. But it'll be really interesting to see later on in the session what kind of performance gains are there to be found. All right, we're starting off again with practice one here on a beautiful sunny day in practice one. Starting off with the track climatization on the medium tyre. As we can see, we completely mess up the first corners and completely missing the apex on that particular lap. But we're able to uh, correct that on the future laps as we now come through the... Uh, very tricky uh, turn five and turn six and as we now head into war towards the more downforcey section of the circle which is actually what we're, we were quite sh we were struggling through overall in terms of pace in uh, in um, the pra overall practice progress but as you see right there we were able to come across the line and get the uh, maximum available number of resource points available in that particular practice program we then moved on into the tire wear test and again it's, it's again it's about uh, Trying to manage them as best as possible without taking too much down, too much out of the tyres. And I think that, again, that twisty aerodynamic part of the circuit is very difficult to get right. But as you can see right here, after, after the second lap, we were able to uh, get the maximum number of resource points available for that. We then moved on into the fuel saving. And as you can see, we're just about close to the purple zone. So we're getting relative, we're so close to actually getting it spot on on our very first lap here. As we now come through the final corner to end the uh, oh, the ends this particular fuel practice program and as you can see again another purple uh, score and that means we've gone now gone three out of three as we now come on to the race strategy had a little bit of an issue on this particular race strategy mainly because of uh, Sebastian Venel overtaking us at turn one which completely screwed us up on this particular lap so unfortunately we weren't, we weren't unable to get the time or the time that the time required for that particular lap but then we moved on to a couple of laps, well, one lap later actually, and we've now got another car trying to overtake us, and that is the uh, Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. This time, though, we're able to hold it around the outside and make sure we don't lose too much time with uh, battling with Ricciardo because I just don't really want to have him uh, brake test me on the apex of the corner. So I kept it behind us for now, and now we've got another car that's trying to uh, thwart our plans here. But uh, I think we're coming through the last couple of corners of this particular lap, and we're actually able to. Uh, achieve the objective for this particular um, practice program despite all these uh, cars trying to screw us over a little bit but as you can see we managed to, to get it done we also did it on uh, two different tyre compounds just to make sure that uh, we got the uh, extra team objective as well we then moved on into the uh, final practice program which was the qualifying pace and as you can see going through this uh, very twisty section you've got to get every single apex absolutely spot on because you can gain so much time through this particular uh, on, on this particular circuit, especially that sort of section, as you can see, running wide towards the end of that that uh, section, as the, at the end of the middle section, and then towards the uh, end, I think that's turn 11. But then we're coming across the final corner now, and we're able to get the maximum uh, or the best time possible on the board, which was absolutely fantastic. So which means we got a, a perfect five out of five when it comes to a uh, purple um, practice programs. So we then we've now got enough resource points to actually get any other upgrades. So and because we had some issues with the uh, the gearbox in the fact that we were not un un unable to actually get it to last the full six races. I decided to purchase a second gearbox upgrade so that the uh, wear on the gearbox is going to be 
even less than what it is currently. So I'm hoping now we won't have to take any more gearbox penalties in for the rest of the career mode because of uh, the current wear that we currently have and then the fact that we've got the extra reduction with this upgrade. And this is going to come in after the summer break with um, at the uh, Belgian Grand Prix. So I'm hoping that comes up the guts on the car and we don't have to then worry about spending reliability points on that side of things. So without further ado though, let's get into qualifying. Good afternoon race fans and here we are again for qualifying at the Hungaro ring. Who will have tuned the perfect setup for their car? We'll find out soon. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Fermi conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time, and it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. All right, here we are in qualifying, ready to start our opening lap. And as always, the first lap is mainly just to get a lap time on the board. I also made a compromise in terms of our actual setup because the weather isn't expected to be good at this particular, for the race. So we have to wait and see on that front, and let's see if that will... Uh, pay off in the actual race itself but we we'll just have to see how, how, what, how fast we can go around this particular circuit because it's a very high downforce circuit so I'm expecting us to struggle particularly through this particular section although we are up on this uh, on this uh, second lap after uh, initially putting that first lap time on the board but uh, that's always the case in, in terms of our uh, qualifying strategy just to get a, uh, a delta to compare us to as we now come across the line we do improve our time but unfortunately don't improve position and that unfo position unfortunately drops down to towards the uh, back of the field and I think it's probably going to be a bit of a struggle for us to get out of uh, Q1. We'll have to wait and see though. As we come through the last couple of corners towards to finish our final lap in qualifying, we're currently sitting in 18th place just ahead of our teammate Verlein. See if we can move up maybe to 17th or 18th. We do move up into 17th which is uh, fantastic and we actually uh, managed to out-qualify a Williams which was amazing. That's uh, pretty impressive around here but uh, even though the fact that they're car isn't really suited downforce wise so we did get in front of Lance Stroll which is fantastic in qualifying in 17th the only downside though is that Fernando Alonso got himself into Q2 and he's our current uh, rival in the championship which is a bit of a uh, frustrating so that means he gains a couple more points on us in terms of the uh, the rivalry but that doesn't matter too much I mean we can just uh, we hopefully we can get past him in the race and hopefully he hasn't made the right setup choice but we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen though in the race so let's get in that into that now it's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today, although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Anthony Davidson, could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Well, as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. And judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo and Perez, Hülkenberg, Ocon, Bottas and Daniel Kvyat, Magnussen, Grosjean, Fernando Alonso and Sainz, Massa, Palmer, Asalba and Lance Stroll, Verlein and Stoffel van Dorn completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. This is a really good starting position for us. Let's try not to lose it. Thank you, Jeff. Here we are on the grid. As I mentioned before, the weather wasn't going to be uh, too spectacular. As you can see, we are starting on the full wet tyres, though. Although, compared to what we had in our last wet race in Austria, the weather is going to improve. So, uh, means we're probably going to be having a stint on the intermediates and also towards the end of the race on the dry tyres. So, uh, we'll have to just make sure make sure we take advantage of the, uh, the wet conditions as best we can. So, I think we are a little bit faster 
in the wet weather conditions, especially with the uh, the different setup that I went for. And as soon as it goes dry, though, we're going to be uh, sitting ducks to some of the cars in front that we were able to overtake. But uh, let's get into the uh, race formation lap right now. So uh, objectives, as always, is to try and move up, but don't get in caught up into any incidents because it's very easy to do so at this so this far back down the grid. Uh, I've managed to avoid them so far. The only real uh, ha issues we've had with, with regards to the front wings has been in uh, Monaco, where the uh, barriers are very close, and I didn't particularly like that circuit. So. Uh, Maybe we uh, make sure we uh, avoid any sort of that, uh, those sort of shenanigans in this particular race and let's see if we can uh, move forward from this current uh, position. So without further ado now, let's get into the race. Lights out and away we go and unfortunately we get quite a lot of wheel spin off the start and we're going to get swamped by Stroll, our teammate, and also Stoffel van Dorn. So we're going to be last by the time we reach turn one. Let's see if we can try and make up, make those positions back up in the braking zone as everyone Constantine is up in towards turn one. So I had to go a little bit wide on the outside of the, I was forced down to the outside of the corner right there. We did manage to make up the three positions back so we're back into up into 17th for now but Stroll has had a good exit is now challenging us again as we now head up towards turn two trying to go side by side with Jolie and Palmer as we go through turn two trying to get ahead of them such that I can then take the inside line for turn three but unfortunately I kind of misjudge it and we make some contact on the exit of the corner twice off the uh, exit and that means uh now Verline's gonna actually gonna have an opportunity to overtake us as we now head up towards turn four which Verline's now got in front of us but we've also got some chaos that's taking place in front of us. I think that's involving the Alonso, but I'm not 100% sure on that. As we now try and go round the outside of Palmer due to the fact that he was slowed down by all the carnage. He forces us off the track, and that is going to allow Verline to try and go up the inside of us into the chicane. So give him a little bit of space on the inside. But we're able to fend him off just about. Let's have, let, before we get further on into the race, though, let's have a quick look and see what actually happened. As you can see, we're going side by side with Palmer. We're in front of him as we head up towards turn three. Then he taps us our right rear, and then we hit him again. Oh, Resulting contact results in us uh, hitting again, and this is on the board with Stroll. As you can see, he got held up quite massively by the fact that we were slowed down due to the hit. And there's Verline taking advantage of our uh, situation that we're currently in. As you can see, this is on board with Alonso now, trying to go side by side with Massa. There's contact with the McLaren, and he's nearly spinning off into the wall, and that caused all the chaos that you saw earlier on with uh, when we were trying to overtake Jolin Palmer. But anyways, back on board with us. We're now going to try and overtake Palmer for the, I think, the third time in the space of about just over a lap. We're going up the inside into turn one. Seems to have ma made the move stick and we forced him a little bit off the uh, out wide right there. So we're able to take that position and now up into 16th place. Up next on our list is Carlos Sainz. It seems like the, uh, again, the Sauber seems to be performing quite well in these wet conditions. We managed to, uh, we are, is able, are able to stick with the Toro as we head up towards turn one to start at, at the start of lap three. We're trying to go up the inside of the Toro Rosso. Getting a little bit ambitious though as we, as we try and Force away past Alonso as well. It looks like we've made up two positions in that corner, which is absolutely fantastic. We're up into 14th place, which is excellent. Up next is one of the Williamses of uh, Felipe, oh, it's the Williams of Felipe Massa. We've already take, overtaken Lance Stroll. We've got a yellow flag that's in play. And I think it's to do with someone that's behind us, but I'm not 100% sure who is under who what's causing that. As we now come up towards turn four, but a virtual safety car has been deployed because of it, and unfortunately, it's our teammate, Pascal Wehrlein, is out of the Grand Prix, which is a real shame. He had a pretty, pretty decent start based off the, uh, off, of the, off the, off the opening uh, lap, but unfortunately, some sort of car problem has affected him, and he is out right at the spot. I think that's where Hamilton had his uh, transmission failure in 2010, but anyways, we're now on to the, um, towards the end of the VSC, coming up towards turn 11, I think, we're not 100% sure exactly what corner number this is. I need to, uh, go back and check the uh, course map ne next time uh, looking around the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix next time po po probably down as we head through in future seasons but anyways we're now on to lap 6 getting up close to the back of Felipe Massa we now head up towards turn 1 getting a little bit amb oh, I didn't decide not to be as ambitious as, as I was against uh, Alonso and Sainz we just make up one position by overtaking Massa and also say to box this lap because I think this is sort of the crossover point between wet tyres and full intermediates. We now come up towards the, uh, what's the end of that? We're saying to box this lap again, but there's another yellow flag in play, and that is Roman Grosjean suffering some sort of engine failure, and he is out of the race. We're able to take up another position. We're now up into 12th place. 
This would be very ideal if a virtual safety car was called here, because if we were able to get into the pits whilst everyone else is, is accustomed to a, uh, or set, having to stick to a delta, it means that we won't lose as much time in the pits. But anyways, this is on board Grosjean. As you can see, the engine has let go in that Haas, which is a real shame for the Frenchman. He was on the cusp of the points right there, and it seems like we're in, and it's not going to be very good in their battle with us in some in terms of the Constructors' Championship. It's now cut back on board to our point of view. We're coming into the pits right about now, but let's see if we can get a pretty decent pit stop out of this and get onto those intermediate tyres as soon as possible and hopefully try and set the competitive lap times. And as I mentioned before, I said I wanted this virtual safety car. I've got my wish, and we're in the uh, pits right now. We're going to take t take off the uh, full wet and put on those intermediates. We're going to be in a real distinct advantage here as we now come out of the pits, but... The other weird thing is, as I exited the pit, I don't see a lap delta on my on my side, and I don't. I'm not. Sure, I was not 100 sure why that was. Maybe some sort of glitch was in the system or something like that, or the fact that we were stationary for so long in the pits meant that we didn't have to worry about delta. I'm not 100 sure on that. Please let me know in the comments what's actually happened there. Is it a glitch or is it supposed to be like this? We'll have to uh, wait and see on that front. But anyways, we're now on to lap eight. We're starting to set some oh, our personal best here through the. Uh, first section was actually starting to catch up some of the guys that are on still on the full wet tyres so I think we've made the right call by coming in just a little bit earlier before the crossover point and just ensuring that uh, we didn't lose as much time due to the fact that there was, there was a virtual safety car. We're now on coming towards the end of lapping as you can see we caught up right up to the back with Stoffel Van Dorm just as, just as we were about to start lap, end lap A and start lap 9 on those intermediate tyres so it seems like intermediates is the right thing to go on as you can see quite a few drivers coming in going into the pits. We're now moved back up into t into uh, 12th place, which is where we were after or before our pit stop, which is uh, fantastic. I think we might have made up a couple of positions right here. As we now come towards the uh, or end of the second sector and starting uh, the third sector, we're now trying to go up the inside of Nico Hulkenberg into uh, the penultimate corner. I think everyone's getting held up by the fact that there's a guy on the, still on the full wet tyres, and that's the reason why they're the, two force, or the Force India of Perez and the Mercedes of Bottas is very close to us. That was because of the fact that there was a, I think the Williams of Stroll was costing us a bit of time. But anyways, we're now on to lap number 11. As you can see, we're currently starting in the points again. So, after, again, after a disappointing qualifying like we did in uh, Silverstone, so all of a sudden, a good strategy has allowed us to move up the field and we have another opportunity to put some more points on the board. We're currently sat in PA, just, uh, just behind the Force India of Paris. We now come towards the... Uh, end of lap 12. Perez is going defensive into uh, that corner, which is really interesting considering the fact that I was a bit too far back to uh, challenge the Force India, but that's kind of compromised him as we now head up towards the final few corners of this particular lap, but unfortunately for us, there was no real opportunity to actually uh, overtake the Force India. The Sauber's been really good in the, these uh, changeable conditions, but uh, unfortunately that uh, Force India has a little bit too much pace on us, so we're really just trying to focus on trying to uh, get in the gap between ourselves and Hulkenberg behind because we're now moving into the crossover point between the intermediates and the dry tyre phase so it's really now the um, the point in which uh, the AI cars which are usually quicker than us are going to start pulling the gap back to us so uh, because of the fact that the, actually DRS has now enabled this lap this lap we were on lap 20 we cut all the way to lap 20 and that's uh, been now, now the crossover point to switch on to the dry compound tyres so we're going to come in for the soft tyres and hopefully those should be uh, Enough to get us to the end of the uh, Grand Prix, which will be uh, absolutely fantastic. I don't really want to make a second pit stop on dry tyres. As you can see, there's a whole train of cars trying to get into the uh, the pits to, to change to uh, dry tyres. This is the leader, Sebastian Vettel. There's a lot of lap cars he's trying to negotiate right there, but he looks like he's going to have to uh, still negotiate a couple of them. He did manage to get ahead of a Renault and also McLaren. And as you can see, all the other key leaders are also in for their respective uh, pit stops for the dry tyres. And as you can see, Hamilton unfortunately unable to get the better of the other Ferrari of Raikkonen. As we now come in for at the end of lap 20, I'm hoping Verlon hasn't come into the pits, which means we would end up uh, getting held up a little bit towards the uh, in our pit stop lap. But we'll have to wait and see. Let's hope that the mechanics give us another decent pit stop right here. And it's an okay-ish pit stop from the mechanics. I think it was kind of a, a fault on my end, uh, misrevving the engine prior to uh, the release, or them releasing me. So a uh, bit unfortunate right there, but we didn't look like we haven't lost any positions 
as of right now. We're currently sitting in P9. That's mainly because of Sainz not coming in for his pit stops just yet. As you can see, he's still on the intermediate tyres. And that's going to show how much he is struggling on those intermediates by one extra lap. As you can see, we managed to close all the way up to the back of the Toro Rosso just before he makes his pit stop, which is a real shame for the Spaniard. It may have an opportunity for him to score some uh, much needed points for Toro Rosso, but unfortunately for him, he's going to drop right back due to the fact that he's lost that much time with an extra lap on those intermediates. Anyways, we got the DRS off that uh, Toro Rosso, but the main real issue we're going to have as we now try and set personal best is the fact that Holkenberg is now going to start catching us up because he's going to have a lot more pace than us due to the, uh, the Renault having a much better car and a much better uh, engine overall at the moment at this point in the uh, the crew. We're now coming across the line to start lap 24. Taking a personal best, but Holkenberg is... I'm just curious to see how Holkenberg is closing the gap. And as you can see, he is closing the gap at a pretty, a pretty alarming rate. So he will catch us before the end of the Grand Prix. So we've got some defending to do if we want to hold on to this P8 position. This is probably going to be our finishing position if we're able to uh, fend them off. As Sebastian Vettel sets another fast lap of the race. We're not too far away from being actually being a lap down because that's how fast the Ferrari has been throughout this particular Grand Prix. It's been insane. It's kind of similar to um, how they were in real life except for the fact that Vettel did have some car issues. So he probably would have accelerated off in distance, into the distance had he had that. As we, anyways, back on, back on to our battle. We've got uh, Hulkenberg trying to go around the outside of us into Turn 1 as we now come towards start lap 27. We're able to fend him off just for now, but we're going to go on board with the replay and look how close Hulkenberg does get to us using the DRS, the slipstream and the superior Renault power for the moment as we now come up towards turn one. Unfortunately for him though, he's on the outside so we're going to uh, force him out force him out, and uh, take the inside line and therefore be in front for the uh, rest of the uh, lap. As we now come on to lap 29, as you can see Hulkenberg trying to go around the outside again. He's also joined by Esteban Ocon, one of our fiercest rivals in terms of uh, fight battling for positions throughout the, this season. It's been a real ding-dong battle between myself and the Frenchman, but it looks like he's going to be joining the fight. So it's really a battle between us three as to who's going to get the final three points scoring positions. We now come towards the end of lap number 29. We've got blue flags in play because that is Sebastian Vettel putting a lap on, a lap, lapping us down the straight. That's kind of the ideal scenario for us that he actually uh, overtook us on that particular straight because it meant he's not going to hold us up at any point through, during the uh, twisty section. Unfortunately, he didn't get DRS off the back of the Ferrari, which is a real shame. But anyways, there's another more pressing matter is the fact that off, oh, a couple, one lap later, I think, Esteban Ocon tries to make a move on Hockerberg. Hockerberg actually locks up into turn two, makes a mistake, and the Force India is able to overtake and take ninth position away from the Force, former Force India driver, in Hulkenberg and now Ocon is the man that's going to be the person that's going to be the man trying to overtake us here. Going to be a little bit more challenging with that Mercedes power in the back of that Force India as he manages to get pull a nose in front of us into turn one but again we're able to fend him off due to the fact that we've got the inside line. If you're really going to try and overtake us guys you're going to have to uh, be a little bit more aggressive and try and take that inside line away from us as we now come towards the end of lap number 32. We've got the other Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen trying to put a lap on us and as you can see same spot as before that Sebastian Vettel was able to overtake us. So I'm trying to lift off the gas just to make sure Raikkonen just does get a pass us before the corner and ensures that we are able to uh, fend off uh, Esteban Ocon into uh, turn one which is uh, fantastic. We've now come through the towards the, uh, middle, oh, the end of the middle sector. We've now got Ocon really right on our tail as we come towards the end of the middle sector. We've also got lap cars, oh more blue flags as Hamilton tries to make his way around. Ocon suffering a lot, lot, losing a lot of time right there as Hamilton tried to get his way round the uh, the four Cindy, uh, which is a bit of a shame for both drivers because that's kind of cost them in both their respective battles. But that's really helped us out there as we now come across, come through the final corner to finish the race. Hamilton comes across, oh, Hamilton coming across the line to uh, get the fast lap, but we were able to come home with some more points and in eighth place. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands, and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more.
And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Moving on to the driver of the day then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? From my point of view, it would have to be the Sauber driver. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximized their potential. And here's how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari extend their lead at the top of the championship. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Sauber, whose good result moves them further up the championship. There'll be plenty more twists and turns to come this season. I hope you can join us at the next race to see just who will come out on top. So, confirmation of the results on the Hungarian Grand Prix. We've got a uh, Noah's Ark sort of 2x2 uh, two two formation in the top six with the two Ferraris, the two Mercedes and the two Red Bulls occupying the top six. Perez in seventh, myself in eighth, Ocon in ninth and Nico Hülkenberg in tenth. It could have easily been a 2x2 two two formation up to eighth place had I not uh, kept Ocon behind, but... Uh, Yep, that's what. Yep, we managed to get some more points on the board, which is absolutely fantastic. Only two retirements with uh, Grosjean and Verline being uh, the two retirements of the uh, Grand Prix. As you can see, this is what the championship looks like. Vettel's now up into second place following that victory, but Raikkonen has a very big margin as we head into the uh, quote summer break. It's not really going to be a summer break for us in terms of the career mode because we're going to be uh, trying to get another video out as soon as possible. Anyways, that was the Drivers' Championship. We're still in 8th place. And as you uh, in the Constructors' Championship, though, there's a little bit more of an interesting battle. As you can see, Ferrari's still in front with the head of Mercedes and Red Bull forcing Dean in 4th. But we've managed to get ourselves back in front of Haas into 5th because of our point scoring finish today and Haas's failure to score. That was really important for us to get back up into that uh, top 5. Uh, Renault also getting another point on the board, which is uh, good for them. And that puts them one point away from that 20-point mark, which will mean that they will probably be in that battle for fifth place in the very near future if they continue to uh, get some more points on the board. But anyways, this is going to be the end of today's episode. If you did enjoy it, please give a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next race, which will be the Belgian Grand Prix, one of my favourite circuits overall in real life and also on this game. So uh, until then, see you later.